Hi guys, today's lesson is on 4.4, solving linear trig equations. So first of all, let's take a look at solving linear equations and what that means. You've been solving linear equations since junior high. They're things like 2x plus 1 equals 5. So this is just your basic algebra you've been doing for years where you want to isolate x by doing opposite operations. So where you might have 2 times x, you would divide both sides by 2. That's exactly what we're doing today. But instead of seeing an x, you're going to see something with trig. So you might see sine theta or cosine or cosecant, some kind of trig ratio. So let's take a look at what we've done over the years for solving trig equations. In grade 10, we would have given you sine theta equals 0 0.3216. We taught you about degree mode and radian mode on your calculator and how all we did in grade 10 was degree mode. So you'd make sure your calculator was in degree mode. Then you would say, I'm solving for an angle. How do I solve for an angle? I put in my calculator sine with the little negative 1. That's how I get the angle. And then you'd put the number in. And your calculator would spit out that this is approximately 19 degrees. Then you'd be done. Grade 11 came along and we learned something called the cast rule. So we still went ahead and we found, using our grade 10 skills, some kind of reference angle. And I'm going to use the same number. But then we said, we have four quadrants on a Cartesian plane. And there's a rule that tells me which quadrants have the trig ratios being positive. So for instance, quadrant two, sine is the only ratio positive, and tan and cosine are both negative. So then we would say, I'm going to put this reference angle, let's say, in these two quadrants, because up here, sine was a positive number. So where is sine positive? In quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. That would mean that theta had two answers. In quadrant 1, the angle back to the positive x-axis is exactly the same as the reference angle. And in quadrant 2, positive x-axis all the way to this line would be 180 minus 19 degrees or 161 degrees. So we ended up with two answers in grade 11. Now in grade 12, we're doing all of the same grade 11 and grade 10 work, but now we're putting the solutions within a certain domain. Now 0 to 360, that's exactly the domain that you used in grade 11. We just usually didn't give you that notation. Now in grade 12, not only do we work in radians as well as degrees, but we can also do different domains. Like we can go in backwards circles on the Cartesian plane, or we can do multiple circles, or maybe we're only interested in quadrant three. So we do the domain from 180 to 270 degrees. So we can give you these domains that tell you exactly where to find the answers. Okay, so it might be answers in radians. It might be uh, one answer in one quadrant, or it might be multiple answers for multiple circles around the Cartesian plane. So that's what we're doing for all of the examples today. We are going to stick within one full circle counterclockwise on the Cartesian plane, but we're going to give our solutions in degrees and in radians to practice that. Now I'll show you one way that you can do this, and then I want you to try, if you can, if you're understanding this, try not to use this kind of shortcut that I'm showing you. So the shortcut that I'm going to show you is called substitution. Substitution is where you find the trig ratio 
and you sub it out for some other variable so that the equation looks much more like junior high algebra. So if I replace that, let's say, with an A, it would look like 2A equals negative 1. This is something you likely could have solved in grade 7. How do you get rid of the 2 in front of the A? Well, they're multiplying, so you do the opposite, which is divide and you get a equals negative one-half. That's something that you can always go back to if you'd prefer um, or if you're struggling, but what I prefer you to do is to solve this equation without substitution. So I'd like you to recognize where sine theta is and treat that entire chunk as your variable, just like we did with the a. But I don't want you to write an A. I want you to start seeing the trig ratios in there as variables themselves. So how do I get rid of 2 when it's multiplying by sine theta? Same step as substitution. And I get sine theta equals negative 1 half. Okay, so you can do all the same algebra around a sine theta that you could around an X or an A or whatever. Now I'd like you to put this in your calculator and tell me the reference angle. Remember from grade 11 that we don't put the negatives in our calculator, so I just want you to go sine with the little negative 1, so this is called inverse sine of 1 half. If you've been really practicing with your unit circle, you might already know the answer for sine of 1 half, since it's on the unit circle, is 30 degrees. That's what we can use the unit circle for if we have it memorized. It's really quite quick for 30, 60, and 45 degrees. Now we're going to talk about the cast rule. My sine ratio was negative. Where in the four quadrants do I have negative sine? Well, quadrant one, everything's positive. Quadrant two, sine is positive. So it must be quadrant three and four that give us our solutions. So here's quadrant three and four. Here's a terminal arm in each quadrant. Here's the corresponding angles that we need to find. We know from the last lesson that in quadrant three, we need to go 180 plus our reference angle. And in quadrant four, we need to go 360 minus our reference angle. That's going to give us two answers. So 30 degrees was my reference angle of 210 and 330. That is one solution under this domain, okay? Since I'm also asking for 0 to 2 pi, which is radians, I need to give my answer, again, the same two numbers, but in radians. So remember, you're going to go your number, and since you want degrees to cancel, put your 180 degrees on the bottom, your pi on the top, and never write a decimal for these unless they start with a decimal. So go 210 divided by 180 and math frac that, you should get 7 over 6. Put the pi into your answer. Do the same with 330 degrees and you'll get 11 pi by 6. If that was over your head, you need to go back and rewatch the lesson for 4.1. So this question here, how they're asking for us to do it within one full circle, 0 to 360 degrees or 0 to 2 pi for degrees and radians means for this question we get four answers. You can see there's a lot of work to show. Every single question where you're solving for something, you're solving for the angle, you should have the algebra, you should have the cast rule, you should have a picture showing you what the angle looks like. If you try to do this without visualizing it, it's really hard to get the right answer. And then you should have all four answers for full marks. Let's try the next one. 
So for this one, sine theta equals root 3 minus sine theta. When we have something in junior high, let's say I sub in the a's, or I could sub in x's or whatever. What would your first step be for algebra when you wanted to solve something like this? You would want to get all of the x's or all of the a's on the same side. So you would go ahead and add a to both sides to get 2a equals root 3. Then you'd proceed by dividing by 2 and you'd be done. Let's do that but instead of using one variable, let's use sine theta, which is a lot more letters, but it's used in the same way. I'm going to add this whole part, sine theta, to both sides. Opposite signs here, minus and plus, cancel. I've got one sine theta, and I'm adding another sine theta, which makes two sine thetas. Remember when you're adding, things don't get squared. That's when you multiply. So that's not sine theta squared. It's 2 sine thetas equaling root 3. The 2 in front is multiply, so do the opposite and divide. And now you have sine theta isolated. You should notice that root 3 over 2 is something that we work with on the unit circle all the time. So go to your unit circle now instead of your calculator and tell me what the reference angle would be for sine theta equaling root 3 over 2. Well, sine theta is the second coordinate, the y coordinate of all the points around your unit circle. So I'm looking at mine right now and I see uh, pi by 3, which would be in radians, or you can do this in degrees, that's fine. 60 degrees would be your reference angle for root 3 over 2. Now you should try to enter this in your calculator right now as well because you need to be able to do it both ways. But be wary, lots of calculators will open a bracket for the radical. The only thing under the radical is the 3. The 2 is not under it. So you need to close the bracket before you divide by 2. Or if you have a newer version of the calculator, you need to press the over arrow, the button that looks kind of like that, so that you jump out of the radical before dividing by 2. Now let's go ahead and let's look at our answer, sine theta. And all you're looking for is the sign. Is it positive or negative? This is a positive root 3 over 2. So cast rule, we need to decide where are we working if my sine ratio is equal to a positive number. Sine is positive in quadrant 1 and 2. I need a picture to decide what the angles are in quadrant 1 and 2. In quadrant 1, the angle in standard position that I want is the reference angle. So 60 degrees is one of my answers. It's not always. Last question, our reference angle was not one of our answers. Be careful. And in quadrant two, I go all the way from the positive x-axis to the terminal arm. If my reference here is 30, I need to minus that from 180, which is half a circle. And I'm going to get my other answer, which is 120 degrees. I have half of my answer now. The question was clear that we needed to do this in radians as well. So here I go with the other half of my answer. Pi by 3 and 2 pi by 3. That's just using my angle in degrees, and multiplying by pi over 180. All right, right off the bat with this one, let's try and do this without substitution if we can. If you need to resort, resort back to substitution because you're really struggling with this, that's okay too. So I see some cos thetas. 
Those are like terms that I can combine on the same side of the equal sign. And I see some constants. I see a 2 and a 1 that don't have a cos theta with them. So those can go to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to start by moving over my variables, my cos thetas. When you move stuff over like this, you're always doing the opposite. So since they were adding 3 cos theta, I subtracted 3 cos theta. 5 minus 3 is 2 cos theta. And you can do this in one step if you're good at algebra. But I'm going to do it in 2 just so it's clear. I'm now going to move over the 2. Okay, so I get 2 cos theta equals negative 1. And then I can divide by the 2 in front. So I get cos theta equals negative 1 half. Now, something to note about your calculator, if you put in your calculator right now negative one-half, your calculator is going to tell you that cos is 120 degrees. Basically, it gives you the supplementary angle to what we want. We want the reference angle, which is always acute or less than 90. The way that you fix this is with what I told you before, we never put the negative in. If we want the reference angle, we just put the number in. So you're going to go inverse cos of 1 half, and that's going to give you the actual reference angle, which is 60 degrees. Just something to know about your calculators. All calculators are going to give you that 120 degree answer if you put it in your calculator with the negative. It isn't wrong. If you go 180 minus 120, you do get the reference angle, but it's just something that you need to know about the calculators. So we've got our reference angle. Let's put it over here. Next step is to decide what quadrants by using the cast rule. So we have cosine equal to negative one half. This is where the negative does matter. So if cosine is negative, that's going to be in the quadrant where sine is the only positive and tan is the only positive. Let me redraw those quadrants. Let me draw my terminal arms in those quadrants. And we can then figure out what this angle is and this angle is. The two calculations for these quadrants are 180 minus reference angle and 180 plus. So we're going to get two answers in degrees here of 120 and 240 to answer our first domain after changing to radians by multiplying by pi over 180 degrees, I'll get the other two answers of 2 pi by 3 and 4 pi by 3. If you're really getting the hang of this, do exactly what we would have done in class anyways. Just pause the video and try to do the algebra on the next one on your own, and then you can resume the video and you can see how you did. So the algebra for this question is first to isolate the term that has the trig ratio in it. So I'm going to move this 6 to the other side. And then I'm going to get rid of the 3. And then I've got a companion ratio. I have cosecant, but we never worked with secant, cosecant, or cotangent in grade 11, and we can't work with it here either. We always have to go back to those primary trigonometric ratios of sine, cosine, and tangent. So look at your formula sheet. Cosecant is 1 over sine. And then we have to think, how do we solve some kind of equation like this where the variable, the x, essentially, is in the bottom? Well, if you've taken physics, this is probably pretty, pretty familiar to you or any science courses. You can just switch locations of these two. So sine theta can go up over here and the two can go down here. 
If you'd like more information on why that is, it's still just following regular algebra rules. I'm still just multiplying both sides by sine theta. They would cancel on this side. And then look what I have, 2 sine theta. I can divide by 2, and I get 1 over 2 equal to sine theta. Okay, but the shortcut works as long as you know when you can use it. You can only use it when you have one thing on each side. If you start adding things to these expressions, you can't use this trick of just switching the sign and the two. So it's written backwards, but it doesn't matter. It's saying that sine theta is one half. So your reference angle off of your unit circle for sine theta being one half is 30 degrees. Sine is a positive number, so according to my cast rule, sine is positive in quadrant one and quadrant two. Here's the two quadrants, here's the two terminal arms, and the angles are going to be here, which is 30 degrees, and here, which is 180 minus 30, or 150 degrees. Change those to radians now, and you get pi by 6 and 5 pi by 6. So there you have it. We just kind of beefed up our knowledge of junior high algebra quite a bit by throwing in trig ratios and then adding the cast rule. Always accompany your questions with a sketch so I know what quadrants you're working with. It's easy for me then to tell if maybe you're making an error on your calculator finding the reference angle or if you're making an error when you calculate it in the certain quadrant. So show all of your work, pay attention to the domain, and do questions on page 211, 1, 3, and 5. Let me know if you need any help.